Hey, how you doing? Sorry about that late the delayed. I was talking to one of my crew members, so I apologize. No, it's okay. It sounds like uh, you're going through the same thing I'm going through, which is why I'm uh, calling you. Yeah, well, I got a good, I got a good set of guys. I just got one guy who doesn't know how to be on time. Yeah, doesn't know what an alarm clock is apparently. Oh, I've got one of those too. So, all right. So, well, thanks, thanks for uh, your content. I appreciate it. Thank you for uh, what, putting yourself out there. Right, you never know what it's going to grow into, and and I've watched some of your things and. Um, <laughs> After this past weekend, I, I realized, you know what, I need a mentor, somebody that can can guide me through this kind of stuff. So um, just explain real quick where I am. <clears throat> I work in real estate. Okay. That's that's my main job, right? I'm single dad, two kids, um, and then I work a second job, right? I'm, I'm My plate is full, absolutely full. Mm -hmm. Because I work in real estate, I have access to a tremendous number of leads in, in major cities across the country. Yep. Of people moving with the actual move-in date, like 100%. I know these people are moving. Right. And so what I wanted to do is start selling these leads to moving companies, right? Okay. That's all I wanted to do. Keep it simple. Mm -hmm. Hey, here's, here's guaranteed people that are moving. Here you go. Mm -hmm. Well, I had a buddy of mine. He was like, no, nah, man, we're going to start our own moving company. You know, he just, you get the leads and you do the sales and I'll bring the muscle. And we'll make it happen. Mm -hmm. like, man, I'm already working two jobs. Are you sure? It's like, nah, I got this. Like, okay. So I set all this up with an attorney, um, took a few weeks, got it, you know, all right and ready and, and so forth and bought the domains and all that mess. And then he bails out on me. Like, oh, I'm, I'm too busy, man. I got this going on. I got, man, I wish you told me this like five weeks ago. So um, I've, I've built out the website. I've worked through the CRMs. I've had to get a couple different CRMs because one stopped doing what it was supposed to. I had to hire vendors to make the CRMs talk to websites. I've wasted a year just getting stuff in place. Mm -hmm. And uh, this past weekend, so I had a move and I'm working with uh, a mover, a moving company. Mm -hmm. And everything that this guy said that he was going to do, he didn't. Um, he was supposed to bring the truck. He didn't. Um, he was supposed to show up and instead he sent somebody else. And then he wanted to argue about how he wanted to get paid. And we already agreed. And uh, everything was just was unnecessary. So at that point, I, I realized, you know what, I probably need to talk to somebody that has been doing this for a while. So, and honestly, I'm, I'm ready to just go back to selling the leads and be done with it. Right. And mm -hmm. worry about, cause it's, I'm really over committing myself by trying to do the moves as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Two jobs already. But when I originally emailed you and set this call up, it was in regards to subcontractor agreements, what they should, what they should say and you know, how they should work and things of that nature. So that's where I am. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, where, where are you located? At? What city? I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. Okay. Nice little, nice little area. There's a lot of moves that are going in and out of that state right now. So that's good. Yeah. Um, so definitely a, a good moving company would uh, benefit, but there is that said, there's also a lot of competition there. Um, what, so why don't you why why don't you just say screw it and just start selling the the leads to moving companies like me? Yeah, um, well, I'm I'm ready to do that. <laughs> but the what triggered this call mm -hmm. was all the crap that I had this past weekend, mm -hmm. and then I just went ahead signed up. Look, I, I need to talk to an expert. And then afterwards, I've had a couple of days to think about it. I'm like, well, how the hell am I doing this? <laughs> Why don't I just sell the lead, right? So um, that's where I want to be for, for now. But I had already set this call up. Mm -hmm. um, and I do have some questions about how subcontracting should work because I'm on the hook for a couple more jobs that are coming up, right? I've given my word mm -hmm. that we're going to be there. So, you know, I have to do that mm -hmm. without the, the person that was supposed to be there. <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, definitely interested in, in doing the lead thing. But while I've got you, um, do want to pick your brain about uh, subcontractor stuff. So, sure, yeah, um, yeah. we have an interior designer that 
you know, she goes in and orders custom furniture for these wealthy people. Mm -hmm. She's had trouble finding reliable people to show up and put the furniture together and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. she hired us. And now her problem is my problem uh, to find those reliable people. And so um, when she hired us, we're not subcontractors to her. She just hired us, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As a separate company. Well, I hired this this guy and his moving company to do the work. Mm -hmm. But it's like they're a subcontractor. Well, where is it? Where is that relationship? What determines this is a subcontractor and this is just a company that I'm hiring? For example, you're not a subcontractor to me, mm -hmm. right? I'm, right. I'm I'm calling you for advice. If right, I'm an attorney, you know. Mm -hmm. So what what differentiates? This is a subcontractor relationship, and this is just two businesses working together. Right. Right. Well, um, a subcontractor is basically there's the contractor, you. And then when if you hire out another company to do the job, that is a subcontractor. Typically, this requires a subcontracting contract. Um, and ChatGBT, OpenAI, or any one of the AIs is really, really good. You could just do a quick Google search or uh, in search engine thing and go, I need a subcontractor template or uh, for moving companies to hire a moving company for me or something like that. And um, then use AI to come up with a simple um, agreement. I believe it's called a 404 agreement when you get an owner operator. Let me, I, let me just do a, since I'm here, let me just... Um, do a quick Google search here for for you. Hang on. Give me a second. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> now, I apologize. I am uh, under the weather right now. My daughter brought something home. Not a problem. I get it. Um, okay. Do, 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 do. It's not telling me. Um, shoot. Let me go see if I still have it in my Google, my uh, chat GPT, because I went and created one here. Yeah. Um, and I've hired an attorney to provide a subcontractor yeah. agreement. Yeah. Um, the person that I was working with um, said that half the stuff in there you can't make them do. You know, so I, I, I don't know. <laughs> well, just because they you can't make them do it doesn't mean you can't put it in the the, the agreement, right? Um, um, and it, that doesn't necessarily make the agreement um, unenforceable either, because uh, if they agree to the, the agreement, then a, a contract is a contract. <clears throat> Excuse me. No problem. Um, <coughs> I must have, sadly, I'll have to do some research and uh, email you or something with that name. But there is an agreement. I thought it was called the 404 agreement, but I could be wrong. Um, I would have to do some more research for it. But there is an agreement where you can get an owner and operator, somebody who owns a truck and operates that will work under your company's name and reputation, etc. Um, they have their own company, they have their own DOT and stuff like that, but they also operate under your authority. Sort of like in the contracting business and building a home. You got a you got the general contractor who's who's in charge of getting the house built, but then he will he'll hire out electricians and plumbers, etc. So it's a very similar uh thing with that. Um someone to get and talk to about that. 
Um, I don't know if you've heard this name or not. If not, you should definitely. He's one of the giants in the industry. His name's Eric Works. He's actually not that far from you. He's in Atlanta, Georgia. He owns Works Moving and Storage. Great guy. Very knowledgeable. Um, getting good with him. And he can talk to you about the owner-operator agreements. I personally have never ran a company with owner-operators on it. I've always been... Um, um, I've always been my guys, period. Right. But this was pre COVID after COVID, <laughs> you know, we get all this, all these people are now paid to stay home. So, um, which is sad, but, um, Eric was very good knowledge about that. And he, a lot, his, a large portion of his business model is using subcontractors. Um, so let me just do some research. Let me email you that agree, uh, what that agreement is. Um, and then once you have it, you can just go to chat GPT and say, hey, I need a I need a, a standard template agreement for my company and uh, a two D to be determined company. Could you write out uh, a, a good standard template? And then you could take that template to your attorney um, and say, hey, here we go. Can we implement this? Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Uh, unfortunately, I've already paid an attorney. Now I've got an eight-page contract. It was quite expensive. <laughs> so, uh, I didn't even think of Chat GPT. <laughs> well, Chat GPT is good starting base for that kind of stuff. Um, it, it's it's not something that you wanted like take to court necessarily. It's something you would want, um, you know, an attorney to kind of soften out the edges on. But uh, um, if you've already have a contract, then he, if he did his job, then he said, okay, don't do this, but do this or write it this way or something like that. He should have gotten and did that all for you. Yeah. Yeah. Let me, let me ask you uh, a couple of things because there were some areas of friction that came up about what you can and can't do and stuff like that. So um, as far as wearing uniform, so our, our company is called Mojo Moving Services. Right. Okay. Um, so if the subcontractor that I hire shows up, um, can I ask them to wear the Mojo Moving Services uniforms? You can ask them, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Um, and since we're not actually doing the move and they're doing the move, mm -hmm. it's covered under their insurance. They just add us as an additionally insured, correct? Um, yes. Um, however, it really depends on how the contract is. Um, per what I understood with Eric Works, um, his his owner operator subcontractors actually operate off of his insurance. They have their own insurance, but they operate off of his insurance, which then he then bills. So if if there is a damage claim or a service claim, he then then bills them. He bills the owner operator for that that claim. Okay. So that's how, now I could be wrong in how that. I could be wrong on that, but I'm, um, but that's how I believe he set it up. Okay. All right. What's the best way to get a hold of this Eric Works person? Go to Facebook. Yeah. And just message him on Facebook. Okay. Um, and just, yeah, you might have to do it several times. Um, just because uh, he's a busy guy, but he, that's how I, I have his personal number, but I can't give that out, obviously. Yes, I respect that. Is it um, E-R-I-C-K? W-I-R-K-S. And Eric is E-R-I-C. -E okay. I like your website, by the way. I really love the vibe. I like Thank that you. 50s diner vibe. Exactly. You got it. That's what we, we want it to be fun. We want it to be easy, right? That's really I like, and I like how big it is, how bold it is. Clean, well, right? You just did a damn good job. Mm -hmm. You 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 did you you spent mo well mo money well spent on this. Yeah, and way too much time. <laughs> now I've just got to start bringing some money in, right? Right, <laughs> money's easy. <laughs> right. Let me. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I gotta handle this. Sorry. Okay. Grand Ledge, you all. This is Jamie. We help you. Correct. 
Okay. I will let the, I will let the foreman know and uh, uh, we'll see what we can get done. Okay, great. Excellent. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. Yeah. I really like that. Yeah. This is a good website. Sorry about that interruption, by the way. Yeah. So we've got a good foundation. I'm going to have to talk to your website creator, man. <clears throat> yeah. But it's just getting that next step. Hey, I've gone through a lot of different vendors to try to get this put together. It takes time. It really yeah, does. Yeah, um, yeah. I've gone through a couple of different CRMs and a couple of different CRM vendors. I've had to start over again a few times and right. huge, huge time waste. Okay. So basically I need to talk to this air guy about um, how he sets up his insurance because these guys that are working for him are – they might be under a 404 agreement, you said. But I believe that's what it's called. Yeah, I could be wrong. It, it might be called something different, but it's something right. like that. Well, what do I need to do? You know, that, that's great for him, but I need to, <laughs> like, what do I need to do? Right. Well, first of all is you got to find somebody that's an owner operator that you can trust. Mm -hmm. One thing that you can do um, is go on to Facebook and to these trucking groups, right? Um, some of these trucking groups and uh, start introduce yourself say hey I own a moving company I'm looking for uh, owner operators that have their own rigs or 26 foot straight trucks that is looking that would look to do do work under my umbrella and I need some good competent owner operators uh, specifically ones that are in the moving business or have experience in the moving um, uh, business um, and I think you'll Obviously, you're going to have to interview them. You're going to have to, you know, all that, all that, that stuff. But I think that's your best way of finding good owner operators. Another good place to do that would be uh, LinkedIn and as uh, also Indeed, right? Yeah. Um, LinkedIn, if you go into put some ads up and link, and if you're in the Facebook groups, that's a good way to do that. Um, but finding a good owner operator that's that you can train or has some moving experience and stuff, that would be a great, that's a great place to find them. Gotcha. Right. Once you have them, then it's a matter of, hey, okay, here's our contract. This is what we expect. And here, 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 here are the carrots and here are the sticks, right? And here's how we split the the funds. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera, right, and then going and then going from there, and then it's just then it just becomes a point of management of them, you know, making sure that they're they've got jobs, and then managing that their jobs are done and done correctly, as per your standards and agreement. Gotcha. Okay, so that's a good resource. Uh, a lot of these guys have their trucks already painted up or had their own logos and stuff on the truck. And that might be a little weird, you know, uh, the client has signed an agreement with Mojo and then a completely different moving company shows up. So well, Eric actually has a good work around that too. He basically he has his, he has his trucks. He's got these 20 foot, 26 and 28 straight trucks that he uses that are already pre-lettered. And basically he leases his trucks to the owner operator. Oh, Gotcha. That's quite a brilliant idea, actually. Huh. Yeah. So he basically started a, a a leasing company. He's got these trucks. He leases these trucks to uh, somebody who owns their own, you know, as an owner operator. And he basically, and he helps, and you know, he helps these people with their business, basically. So basically, these yeah. people are starting a sub business under his umbrella. Gotcha. Wow. I can only imagine the paperwork involved in that. It, it's extensive. I mean, you got because you got you got a you got a CYA a lot of things when you're doing things like that, and then you got to create your own entities because if you got an owner operator that's leasing a truck, that's you know what I mean, that has your stuff, you know what I mean. You've got to be protected if he screws up. You know, if he's out drinking and driving, and in your and if he's got your name on his truck, yeah. you know, how do you protect your company from his? screw up kind of thing you know what i mean so there's there's some hoops but yeah. it can't be done that's 
That's great information. That's much further down the road than where I can possibly be right now. I just really need to figure out what I need to be doing. Um, okay, a couple other questions about this work with subcontractors and stuff. When the subcontractor finishes the job, do they mm -hmm. collect payment in their company's name or do they collect payment in Mojo's name? The attorney said I can go either way, but well, it would be best if you collected it under your under your name. Okay. Um, so if you're using a CRM, he would use your CRM to collect the payment. Um, and then he could just basically bill you for his portion of the job or whatever the agreement says. Yeah, that was my next question. That was the thing. So if he's a subcontractor, subcontractors provide a W-9 and you pay them, right? Right. So I'm actually a subcontractor because I do some entertainment work for a DJ company. I sign a W-9 mm -hmm. and I don't send them an invoice. Just when I'm done with the job, they pay me the agreed upon money. Right. So at the end of this job with this particular individual, I paid him his money. Um, but should I be asking for an invoice from these guys instead of just paying them or or I would. It's good for your business because that's tax deductible. Um, I'm not an accountant, so don't right. take me at my word, but I'm pretty sure whatever you would pay a subcontractor to do the job would be tax deductible. Yeah, absolutely it is. Um, so, um, you know, so yeah, for tax purposes and, and purposes of keeping that person honest, it would be best if they did uh, a purchase order kind of system or a billing system or or an agreed amount every whatever it is a month or whatever it is you d decide to come up with. Okay. Um, I believe a typical a typical agreement is a 70 30 70 split. You get 30, they get 70 because they got to pay the they got to they got their they got all the, all the truck expenses plus the employee expenses and stuff because they should employ their own employees and stuff like that. So right. I'm typing up these notes. Right. Um, I have heard of a 40-60 split, but I don't know. I don't know how. What, I couldn't tell you what would what's best. Yeah. And they send me an invoice, huh? Okay. That's how. Personally, that's how I would have them. They okay. would have to send me an invoice for every single job that they did, and then I would pay them. I pay their invoices after a certain amount of time. So if they did a week's worth of jobs, they would give me a week's worth of invoices. And then once a week I would pay them or every two weeks or once a month or whatever it is. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. That needs to be spelled out in the contract too, because yep. I can see where, where the way I'm paid as a subcontractor right now for, DJ, I, I travel and do weddings and stuff like that. Um, I just get paid every week. Okay, I finish this job, you know, I get X number of dollars. I don't send an invoice. Um, but if event, if a sub is expected to send me an invoice in order to get paid, then I need to make sure that's communicated in the contract. Mm hmm. Would I need to pull a, get a W-9 from them if I'm doing that? I guess no. I guess not because it's one company billing another company. That's all it is. Well, you would have to get a W-9 because after a certain amount of money you've paid to them, you then have to put them on a W-9. Well, let's look at it like this. You you buy supplies like moving supplies, right? Right. You don't, you don't ask a W-9 from the company that you're – buying your moving supplies from. Yeah, but that's, that's, I'm not, yeah, but I'm also not hiring anybody. I'm going to a certain company that provides a particular product. They're not providing services to me or, or doing services for me under my name. Okay, they're providing so, me boxes or tape or something. Okay. So because they're providing, because this is not a service industry. Okay. Yeah. I, I got you. Okay. Good to know. It's these little things, man, these little things. But I tell you what, it take it is it is extensive. It is it is a you know it could be a lot of stuff. But once you got that dialed down and narrowed down, it 
your job will be so much easier because then it becomes just clockwork. It's always going to be that 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 learning curve, uh, with that exponential learning curve. And once you have that done, you know, and you've got the agreements down and they're they're fine tuned, it's a becomes a well oiled machine that you could pretty much let run itself. That's what I'm trying to get. And so I thought this agreement that I had in place was enough, but it just created more um, more questions than answers. All right. And so this sub would send me an invoice and I would just pay them however they they require payment. OK, gotcha. All right. Um, anything else I should be asking? Well, let me ask. So are, are you guys fully licensed and insured? I don't know about your state's requirements, but. No, we originally I was only going to do leads. Okay. And then this other fell in my lap where we just did this because I know the, the interior designer. I was like, OK, that's fine. I can do this. So, no, we, we don't. And that was my other question, too, is I need to know where to get insurance, how much, you know, what it needs to cover, that kind of thing. And if I'm doing leads, if I'm only going back to selling leads, then do I really need insurance? You know, right. if you're only selling leads, you don't need insurance. Right. Um. um and I think that that's a great business model, especially if you can provide real good leads at an affordable cost. Because, um, you know, like everything, there are guys who are at the bottom, like you and me, we're, we're uh, labor-only type guys, mm -hmm. right? We, lo we do unloading, we do loading, we do unloading and packing and all that. That's what we specialize in. Right? <laughs> and I, I don't know about you, but my month of May has been just fantastic with getting leads, you know, but my primary lead sources are moving helper and thumbtack, right? If I had, and, but there are other lead sources out there like movingleads.com, usahomelistings.com. Um, there's a couple other people that provide leads, but they can be, they can be expensive, right? Um, so if you could afford, and then there are just lead providers, which are horrible. They go to these real estate sites, they put up a, a thing, and then they get all these tire kickers coming in that are, some people think they, the, the lead form is for how to buy a house or, you know, or rent a house versus, oh, you're moving. You know what I mean? So now they, all these movers are calling, oh, I see you're moving. Uh, no, I just was looking at maybe renting a house. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or... No, I was just looking around, you know, so they, those leads are horrible and I hate those leads. However, they can be very, very profitable if you have a calling center. So if you could provide a lead source that's affordable, yeah, right, um, for the common guy from my level to the top level, I think you're going to, you could do very, very well because yeah. um, there's really not a lot of lead providers other than USA Home Listings and, and then movingleads.com, which are actually based off of the real estate leads, actual MLS leads. Right? Um, so if you could provide that, that would be that would be amazing. You yeah. know, and if you could somehow tap into the UK markets and Canadian markets as well, then you, you could actually go global and, and then um do very well. I actually consult for a guy over in the UK about doing the, what you're looking at, providing leads uh, to the UK and Europe markets. Oh wow! Um, so he, you know, he's. I've had several several talks with him, and he's just killing it over there now. You know yes. what I mean? Because he he has a he has a, a high demand product that's at an, a very that's at an affordable rate, not cheap but not expensive. That mm -hmm. That most most companies, even at even at the lower echelon company like you and I, afford, <clears throat> right? Like right now in the U.S., if you were to generate the cost of a acquiring a customer, a CAC, um, so it is around a hundred to two hundred dollars, right? That's pretty expensive. Yeah. A, a new company with very minimal budget can't afford a, a Google campaign to get a, a customer that's going to acquire, acquire a customer at a hundred bucks. 
right? However, a big company that's doing multiple, multiple, multiple millions of dollars, like Eric Works, you know, who's doing, I believe, near $10 million a year gross, he can afford that lead. And that's a very, very affordable. So if you could, you know, get leads for somebody, let's say at 25 to 50 bucks, you know, that would be, that would be something that would be very popular. And you would get, you, you'd get a lot of qu good quality. You start beginning uh, uh, customers versus concentrating on the high end movers. Yeah. Now USA home listings, I can't say enough good things about them, but when they first started out, they were really great and very affordable. Now they've got they've added on. They've got they've got this complete machine. There's a lot of overhead now. They're trying to do all these other uh, side services that are related, um, and their their leads are actually far more expensive than what they used to be. They're still good leads, but they're more they're they're far 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 more expensive than they they were and should be, right? <clears throat> there's a there's like 17,000 moving companies in the US alone, somewhere in that vicinity, right? And maybe there's maybe a thousand top top moving companies out there. So you can see there's probably about 15 to 16,000 small independent companies that are doing 300 to 500,000 dollars a year typically. Right. There are very few that have broken that million dollar mark or more. Does this make sense of what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've got you to your point. And I was listening. Um, I have access to leads that are in two buckets. One, you've got the tire kickers and then other ones. We know that they're moving. And we know the exact date. And so those guys are moving in a couple of weeks versus other ones that might be moving in a couple of months. The difference is the ones that might be moving in in a couple of months, that's a might, it's a maybe, versus these are moving within two weeks. Boom. We know it. We've, we've got their phone number, their email address, their, you know, everything. They're like, yeah. they're, they're, the house is like in escrow and under contract and all that. Yeah, stuff. yeah, and it's done. It's a done deal. Um, so what we're looking at is uh, I've, I've offered this, so not knowing how to reach out to moving companies. I posted this on Craigslist, right? Uh, under the moving section, you know, offering leads and stuff. What I've run into is the people that have shown an interest don't have the staff to call. Right. On. They don't have the sales staff. Right. Mm -hmm. And so now then there was a hybrid of me making all these phone calls and text messages for them. And what I can do is I can get that under contract request a reservation fee from the client mm -hmm. that they pay Mojo mm -hmm. and then basically assign the contract to the vendor. Mojo's already got its 150 bucks. We're done, you know, and then whatever the vendor does. But then there's the issue of do they show up? How do they get paid? Do they charge the client? Do we charge the client and then get in? This is big mess, big, 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 big mess. Plus I have to have access to their, messaging systems and their calendars to make sure that they could show up to the job if I sell it. And it's just. Too right. What, you, what you're, what you're looking at that, what that, that business model basically is, is called a moving broker. Yeah. And moving brokers do not have the best reputation. Most of them are out just for a quick buck. They'll sell a job at rock bottom prices, assign it to a, a carrier um, and then that carrier will like go, hey, this is not our prices. And then Jack, Jack Rabbit, the friggin' prices to to the moon and the guys can't afford it. And then there becomes this whole like hostage thing and it becomes yeah. a, a big moving scam. I, if I were you, I would stay out of I would stay out of the moving broker business. Yeah. Get into it. Um, but most of your companies that are scams in the moving industry are moving brokers. Yeah. OK. Um, it's too well, much to keep yeah. up with. It really is. It is, and then, then, and then, if you're going to be legitimate, then you're 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 get you're getting people to sign up under your thing. Um, they have to f do a, a basic agreement that they have to maintain a certain standard, blah blah blah. And then you got to keep up with that, and it's just 
unless you have the infrastructure for it, I wouldn't, I wouldn't bother with it. Yeah. Right. I just wouldn't deal with it. Um, couple options. I would ask you that if you're going to do moving leads, just sell the leads. If then let the companies deal with the leads, however, they're going to deal with the leads. Yeah. Let that be their problem because it is their problem. Yeah. Right. If they screw up the leads, then that's on them, not on you. Yeah. Right. Uh, another thing that you could do um, is, well, there's actually three options you could do um, is you could team up with um, a call center. There's a couple of great call centers. Um, um, there's a couple of call, great call centers that you could team up with that you could say, hey, look, I got these leads. Um, I could, we could work together, partner. I will provide the leads. You could do the sales calls. And then we, when we do the sales calls, for a, for instance, um, these sales companies have a company like me that come in and do calls for them, right? Um, and they will answer all the calls. So if a lead comes into their CRM, they call, they call the customer, they book the job for, for that moving company, and then they, they put it on that person's CRM, whether they're using Smart Moving, Move It Pro, Movegistics, or whatever they're using, right? Um, or, maybe, or maybe the call center has their own particular CRM, like OnQ or, um, you know, Zen, Zen Sales from uh, uh, Move It Pro is another company. Uh, you know, something like that. That's, that's another option. Then there's a third option is there's a company called uh, Movers Dispatch Board run by a, a lovely woman out of Dallas, Texas called Miss Reen. She runs a board, right? Uh, a, a board that we're a moving company. If they if they got a job that they can't handle or it's too big or something, they could put it on this board. And then another company, like an owner operator or someone, could go and say, I'll take that job and uh, go and do that job for X amount of dollars, right? So you could hook up with her or partner up with her and say, good, we're also going to provide you leads and stuff like that. So there's if you form up some good partnerships. There's I think with uh, some sales calls or with Miss Reen, um, that would be a great opportunity to build your business and get provide some good leads th where you're not having to deal with the sales and, and the CRMs and stuff like that, <clears throat> the partner or and or the moving company. Gotcha. So I have leads in specific cities. What's the best way for me to reach out to moving companies who may be interested in uh, purchasing those uh, qualified leads? Great question. There's a lot of YouTube channels on it, but your best option is to go through LinkedIn, right? LinkedIn Sales Center. And then uh, there's a couple third-party programs that you can do where you could scrape LinkedIn sales, uh, LinkedIn, and you could get all the CEOs and all the owners and their email addresses and phone numbers and just start doing an email campaign, regular email and say, hey, I've got a bunch of leads. I'm very affordable. Uh, you know, we don't have the overhead, so we can sell them to you cheap. I can guarantee exclusive, exclusive territories, blah, blah, blah. You yeah. know, all that kind of thing. Okay. So go to LinkedIn uh, Sales Center. Yep. I've, I've never heard of that. I, I'll probably pull up a YouTube video and see if I can learn how to do that. Yep. Uh, and there's a lot of there's a lot of YouTube channels that'll teach you how to scrape LinkedIn and get those. And then there are softwares that will do it for you. You just say, hey, I want all the CEOs or all the principals of moving companies. Give me all their email addresses and, you know, all the all the principals that would handle, you know, this kind of job. And they will scrape all of those. And then you didn't take that. And then you could take that list and you just put it into an autoresponder or something like that, like a Aweber or Constant Contact or whatever, and just do email campaigns. You know, constantly be doing an email campaign. Okay. If you don't know how to do email campaigns, there's a lot of YouTube channels. Oh, that yeah. Will teach you how to do emails. Yeah, I, I used to do that with what MailChimp and stuff like that. Okay. Back in, the, back in the day. So, yeah. All right. Cool. Um, so and then, obviously, obviously, the best thing also to do, which you've already done, is get a good website. And mm -hmm. I can put you in my book called 
what every mover needs, which I sell to movers for 50 bucks. And it yeah. contains all the assets that movers will ever need, like insurance companies, uh, sales lead provider, sales call centers, you know, all, everybody that does all that stuff. So yeah, I, I could put that into my book and then, cause I update that regularly and I sell that off. sell that. Yeah. I saw that in the, as I was going through signing up for this. So I'd love to do that. All right, cool. What what city are you in? I'm in Lansing, Michigan. Michigan. That's north. Oh, for yeah. you, for you <laughs> Dick Man guys, that's we're Yankees. Yeah, let's see. I tell you what, let's see if I have um leads in Michigan. I don't know if we have a market there or not. Okay. Um if I do, we'll see um if I can provide leads to you and stuff like that. You know, that call. would be wonderful. But let I me mean, I don't want to over promise because I'm not sure about that Michigan market. <clears throat> Southeast, yeah, I could tell you all day long what cities we're in, but I'm not really sure about Michigan. No problem. You, yeah, that's if you, if you do, you do, and if you don't, that's that's fine too. I'm, I'm okay with both, but I I just want to say I really do lo- dig your website, though, man. I am loving that website. Yeah, I appreciate it. It's uh, that part's great. It's but right now I'm just stuck between working with people or or just trying to sell leads and. Truthfully, if this is too much of a problem for you, my personal opinion, get rid of the moving company um, and, and just concentrate on the leads. Yeah. Because you, if you got the leads, you can actually automate that where you don't even have to be around. Yeah. Right? I, It'll yeah. take some time to automate it. but I've already got that in place. I've got it automated. It's ready to go. I just need to find people that. Yeah, all their shit together. To be honest with you, <laughs> get it automated. Get it. Uh, get a good. Uh, get, a good <laughs> get a good email manager. Someone you know that can manage your email campaigns, and, and uh, a, a salesperson. If that's not you, yeah. there you go. I mean, it's done all online, and you can just rake in the bucks. Okay, I that's think that's the way for you to go, especially if you're affordable. Yeah. <clears throat> Because there's right. really not much competition providing these kind of leads, um, and so if, and seeing as this, and there's such a great huge market and demand for them. Right? Yeah, well, it's it's kind of insider information. I mean, I I know who's moving and I know when and I know where. Mm-hmm. So it's and that's something that no one else has. So I'm very fortunate for that. I just need to make sure that I can find the right people and you know actually going to do do it i've provided some leads already just to kind of test for free and if you give something away for free they don't follow up they don't call the people they don't nothing right sadly that's that's that is the the way of the well you know some of these guys who don't have a call center or have the facilities or don't want to pay a call center to handle their leads sadly that is that is what keeps small companies small is they're unwilling to pay what's going to make them big. You know what I mean? Yeah. They think, oh, I got to pay a call center 10% for them booking jobs. They don't realize, yeah, but if you hired internally, you're still going to be paying right around 10% anyway, between yeah. payroll, uh, hiring, you know, all the hiring costs it costs to hire, you know, training, etc. So, what the hell, dude? You know, yeah. they just they they their ment- their mental powers when it comes to that is thing. And I deal with that a lot here on you know with these calls. So trust me, I get what you're going through. Um, but again, you you've got a good like I said, there's seventeen thousand moving companies out there. You know, and they yeah. all every single one of them needs leads. Yeah, well, quality leads. Yeah. So well, I've got a lot to think about and digest and research, and um, it's it's uh, it's a lot of information. But Jay, I really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much. Well, great. Uh, hopefully, I gave you some good information and at least some direction of where to find the information. Yeah. Thanks, Jay. All right. Appreciate it. Thank yeah, you. You have a great day. Stay in touch. Take care. All right. Bye bye.